Hello, everybody. This is Sims Complete. I'm your host, Matt Sims, along with my co-host, Super Bowl MVP, Phil Sims. Mm. And we are here breaking down the NFL quarterbacks for this year's 2024 NFL Draft. The combine is right around the corner. And we are going to go through all of the potential quarterbacks to be drafted for this upcoming NFL Draft. And we're going to start right now and get into Michigan's quarterback, Michigan, J.J. McCarthy and his prospects for this year as an NFL quarterback. So, Big Phil, welcome to the show. How the hell are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm just sitting here in my office, uh, whatever, uh, doing this. I'm really excited about doing this, and I want everybody to know this is like our first little thought about J.J. McCarthy, the combine, <laughs> his workout, more study. So our opinions could change a little bit, but we got a little thumbnail sketch here, what we're doing. And then also – why am I a co-host? Why can't we say we're both hosts? Or, you know, I don't, I don't know. That's cool. We could do that. I mean, it's, I'm a co-host then, too. We're both co-hosts. co-hosts. Sounds like I'm the backup quarterback, which, you know, I don't like that crap. So. <laughs> oh, well. But, hey, let me just start with J.J. McCarthy. We'll keep it. I'll keep it tight. Yeah. Uh, when he said he was coming out and declaring for the draft, I said, oh, man, don't do that. Play another year of college football. But then I watched him, saw their national champs, the, a lot of players gone, new coach, Jim Harbaugh not there, whatever. And I thought, as I watched him, I went, you know what? He made the right decision coming out. I think he's ready for the NFL, not to be a day one starter. But that's my first initial thoughts that I changed my opinion once I started watching him play a little more. Yeah. Now, initially, though, why were you saying for him to go back to school? What was the main just, reasoning? Um, you know, I think when I watched him play, I like a lot of things about his game, but I just thought it needed a little more polishing you know, being relaxed more, you know, this his decision making was good. We'll get into that later. But just the number of throws, you know, I never felt like Michigan was relying on J.J. McCarthy to go out there and win the game for him every week. Right. Whereas some of these other quarterbacks, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, for years, it's just all about them and all those throws in which we have learned with experience and watching the NFL. When you have a lot of experience, that transition is a lot easier. So that, that was my reservations, I guess you would say. Yeah, I, I understand that too. I think he's one of the quarterbacks that he has tremendous ex- experience as far as being a leader and, and obviously having the weight of the world on his shoulders, being the Michigan quarterback with Harbaugh, yeah, you know, tough. with trying to to win a national championship after falling short the year before. So I feel like he's experienced in that regard. But, you know, we, we definitely value uh, as quarterback evaluators and quarterback coaches, you know, just – Time on task and time on right. task, throwing, throwing aggressive throws, different throws, play action, all that kind of stuff. You just can't get enough throws and experience that way as far as the decision making process of what the NFL is asking you to do. So I totally agree with you on that. What are your thoughts, though, for him as far as the way that he was kind of brought up through this college football work? Because he's not really necessarily in that. Uh, you know, spread him out, throw a million bubbles, that kind of world. He's with Harbaugh. He's with Moore. They're they're a little bit more of an NFL philosophical yeah. team. You know, is that a positive for him coming out this year? Yeah, I would say so. I, I like, well, to this degree, he had to play different. It had to be more precise or just the situations, understanding what they were doing. It's not like, you know, um, well, I got, I'm going to throw it every down, so it doesn't matter if I throw it a few incompletions right. and miss a throw. Yeah. So that's, and I think that'll serve him well in the NFL to be, to think more, to try to be precise, but knowing that you're just not going to throw it every single down to get something done. Yeah, definitely, so, definitely. Yeah, and, and, that, and let's and go to this. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I mean, yeah, hey, hey, man, I know you want to. No, I'm kidding. What, what's on your no. mind? Go ahead. No, just so his size. Let's kind of go down the list a little bit. What about his size? Absolutely. He's six, yeah, so he's listed six, at 6'3", 202. He's 6'3", 202. And for, for me, when I watch him on film, I think he comes across like, you know, he, he doesn't seem small in the pocket. I do think that his his base, as far as where his feet are, sometimes get a little too damn wide so it feels like he kind of shrinks in the pocket as his feet Mm. get wider and wider but I think his size is good I don't think that it's a detriment I think he still is a young man right he's only played three years in college football as compared to some of the others that we'll talk about later through this process who have talked played four and five years and I think that he will be someone that that kind of grows more into his body matures more into his body with his overall physical presence you know, but for yeah. right now, I think he's got a good frame. He's he's limber, and, and I like what I see from him as far as just like his size and look on the film. 
Yeah, me too. I, he is going to be – I'm not worried about his size at all. I think that sometimes we over-evaluate that. How much do you weigh? Well, be who you are. He's a right. tall, slender kid. He's always going to kind of be that way. If he's 202 now, you know, in a couple of years, he'll be 215, which is plenty big and uh, enough padding there to take the punishment that you need sometimes for the NFL. So let's talk about this. How about his mobility? Um, where do you put that in in the range of what – the NFL is looking for right now. Yeah, I think in the range of a, the modern NFL quarterback, his mobility is definitely above average NFL standards. Right. I think that he moves extremely well. Now his rushing, you know, it's not like he was relied upon heavily, but in the past two years, you know, he's rushed for uh, eight total touchdowns. He's had a long of 39 and 22 over the last two years. So I think when it's there to be had, he is a player that can make plays with his feet when it's asked to do that, right? Yeah. I think his pocket movement is actually really good. I think he's one of those guys that has sudden bursts of pocket movement where he can redirect really quickly. He has that that twitchiness that you would like at the quarterback position to move out of danger, you know, at a moment's notice. And I think he does have a good pop with his feet too, where he can reset to throw aggressively too down the field too, which I think is a huge thing. What are your thoughts on that? I think you hit it all. I like it. You know, the fact is mobility. I think uh, on the run, throwing the football, we'll talk about that too. Well, first off, I think he's really good on the run, throwing the, throwing the football. Yeah, let's I go to that. Go ahead. It. So, and which, you know, is, is a big deal now in the NFL, escaping the pocket on the run, right or left. And I think he does both well. I saw quite a few running left throws really against his body, which I liked. And on the run, he lets it go, man. Yeah. I mean, it is a fastball, and there's no doubt about it. The no. velocity is tremendous, and it's a big deal for the NFL, and I think he's going to fit in well in that, in that department. I, I completely agree with you. I, that was one of the things that I think I did a, a little bit of a, a double star next to the throws right. on the run, right? Because you, you could see there his athleticism and his flexibility, right, a and his limberness all in one. You know, there was multiple plays where he is running, like you said, to the right or to his left, and he's throwing very aggressively across the field. And it's not one of those where it's like a wobbly football where it's just, you know, thrown up into the traffic. He's throwing absolute strikes. And, and to me, that is definitely a, a positive for him in this evaluation process because we've seen with Pat mm -hmm. Mahomes, you know, with all these guys, their ability to throw on the run and to make uh, plays when the play isn't there is so important in today's NFL football game. And I think he is one of those players that uh, can play within the system and also can create outside of the system too. All right, let's do this real quick here. Arm strength. I think he's, you know, there's two categories always for me. You are a thrower and a passer. Do you, if you have both, great. The transition in the NFL is much easier. He's a thrower. He basically knows one speed. Let's just throw this damn thing hard. <laughs> and and the, the, I like that. I like the fact that he throws screens well behind the line of scrimmage, which is a big deal. Getting the football out there with power, easy to catch. He spins the ball really well, too, which is going to help in bad weather, wind, and everything in the NFL. And uh, passer, he's not a passer yet. You know, right. In other words, I don't see a lot of throws with good touch, using his body and all that. But his arm strength is above NFL average without question. Uh, there won't be any worries about that. Uh, spins the ball really well, which helps in bad weather, like I said. And it kind of tells you a lot about your motion when you spin the ball well, too. So nothing to complain there. It's all, I think, we're putting him in the top half of the NFL when we say some of these things. Yeah, I agree. And I think there's room for growth, too, for him to become even a better passer in the NFL. No doubt. Won the NFL ball, we always say it every year. It's easier to throw that football. It's easier to spin it. It's easier to drive that ball down the field. The Duke is the most perfectly designed football in the <laughs> world, right? Now, the other thing, too, that I really like in what you said there is it, I understand their offense didn't really ask for a lot of anticipation-like throws. You know, I, I wrote this note, too, when I was watching him. You know, he reminded me a little bit of, uh, of Phil Sims with the New York Giants at times, right? A lot really? of back shoulder throws, a lot of throws where people are covered extremely well, and he is throwing them open by throwing right. them aggressive on those back shoulders, those high aggressive footballs, too, in the red zone. And, and that's what really impressed me, right, where there was a lot of throws in that high and low red zone area where windows were very tight. 
He trusted what he saw. He cut the he cut it loose, and he made a lot of accurate throws into tight windows in the red zone. And I was extremely impressed with that. I think the anticipation aspect of it, the touch throws, I think he's more than capable of doing it. He just needs a little bit more time on task in an offense sure. that occasionally asks him to do that. But uh, I don't fault him either, though, with the limited amount of reps that he has. You know, at dropping back and throwing for Michigan. You know, he doesn't have that, oh, yeah, hey, let me let me lay this one in there, you know, and see what happens. I'll get another 20 reps after this. It was like, no, it's one of my eight reps that I have in this game versus Penn State. I got to rip it in there and make it count. <laughs> yeah, no passes in the second half against Penn State. That's another story. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other thing is, too, we got to talk about this even more. and We've already kind of answered it here. Right. Back shoulder throws. I mean, it's a huge part of the NFL. It is. And all the quarterbacks coming out, we'll see. Some of them don't do it very well. And really, to me, back shoulder throws can only be one speed, and that's fast. That's right. You know, you, you determine that with practice and everything, and uh, it's something you really got to pay attention to. And I seem to, I, I saw it a lot with all these quarterbacks, but J.J. McCarthy was good at it because, like I said, he has one speed, and it plays well in throwing it. What do Some you of think, the other uh, things. Yeah, what do you ahead. think, though, too, about his decision-making, right? Right. Is this, I, is this decision-making uh, NFL average, is above average? You know, what, what are your thoughts on that? I thought it was good. Yeah. You know, yeah, I thought it was good. I didn't sit there and go, wow, you're putting a lot of footballs into trouble. I did not see that at all. And, um, you know, I just want everybody out there to know I, I'm pretty rough on this, this this stuff when it comes to evaluating them <laughs> because I want to tell the truth and what I really believe and see and everything like that. But, yeah, decision-making, really good, no problems with it. You? No, you I thought he was a very good decision maker. Only four interceptions on the year, five interceptions a year ago. I think three of them came in one game against TCU. So I think he's done a really good job of protecting the football and really playing uh, the way that Harbaugh designed the football team to play, right? And I think right. that's one thing that I'll, I'll put a, a another star next to just like how I view him as a football player. He adapted to what was being asked of him at Michigan, you know, so we have to always keep that in mind when we evaluate these quarterbacks, right? Right. That's Michigan asked him to make a lot of tough throws and a tough, tight windows. They played a very condensed style of football. They ran the football a lot. He had to make big throws on third downs consistently, especially against Ohio State limited throws in big games. He seemed to always make them for Michigan this year. And I think that's, that's a credit to his decision-making. That's a credit too to his, you know, courage really too to cut it loose when it was there. And, uh, and I think that's something that despite the lack of reps, I, I will, you know, again, promote the fact that he made the most of kind of what he had to do when he was asked to do it. And I think that's very important. Well, you know, for everybody listening, you know, decision-making, how do we judge it? Well, because we know, you know, we look at the play and we know who's the, the primary receiver to the second one, to the third, whatever. And I thought he did a good job of like looking at one and moving to the next one pretty quick. Yeah. You know, he didn't get stuck on one receiver, like hoping he came open. So yeah, that, that was really good. And uh, it, it, the Michigan offense, it's not like it has every NFL play in it. But it it does have all the what a starter kits for everything the yeah. routes you know it's it's not extravagant but it uh, prepares you to play in the NFL too uh, maybe just like you've talked about many times here just not the number of throws that you would like as a college quarterback going into the pros but still enough where he understands the system. And he's going to adjust to it, I think, pretty well in the NFL. Yeah, for sure. And I think just the the leadership qualities, right? His 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 growth under uh, a former NFL quarterback, running that NFL type of system, you know, being right. under center, play action passes, right? You even said this, right? That you see him kind of as that play action passer at the next level too that could be very good and improve you know from that under center position and being really aggressive throwing the football down the field in that regard uh what do yeah. you thought what, I, what are, I would say this yeah. Matt just real quick go ahead the deeper he drops the better he'll be right you know what I mean the yeah. more separation gives him a little time to think and space let the defense spread that's gonna that's gonna work work well for him in the NFL. Yeah, definitely. But go ahead. What were you gonna say, real quick? I, I just want you know your thoughts on him in, in his throwing technique. You know, is does he have a good throwing technique in your eyes? Is there, is there room for improvement? Your oh, thoughts yeah. on he, that? It, it will improve. He'll learn in the NFL that the you you got to hit all the routine plays and then you got to hit special plays. Right. And the routine plays you can't miss. And I think that was a strength of his. 
I was getting ready to say that. The short throws, he has one speed on the short throws. It's all out. and But he gets the football to the guys quick with power. And, you know, I ask receivers all the time, do you like a quarterback that throws it really hard and spinning and all that? And they go, absolutely. They want that ball as quick as you can get it to them. Right. And I think uh, that's really good. Yeah, his motion can get long, can cause some problems, but I think that's going to be an easy fix for him once he gets to the league. Yeah, I agree. It, it is a little long. It's a little bit of a wind-up occasionally sometimes. He pushes the football away from his body a little too aggressively when he is trying to, uh, uh, as I say to my QBs, unleash the crack in a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he really does uh, – spin the ball extremely well. And I think there will yes. be a, a lot of ability for him to improve a, as a passer at the next level with more reps and opportunities. So uh, final thoughts on JJ McCarthy. Well, I think he's tough. He play throws the ball well with pressure around him. Yeah. Took a lot of big hits as he threw the football down the field with power. He can throw it sideline to sideline. That's a big deal. You know, NFL coaches, they get a little scared of the sideline for some reason. That's where you're going to see less people and they're going to give you, well, if you want to throw it from the left hash to the right sideline, we'll give you that. And he can do that. You know, that was impressive. He did right. it a lot, too. Yeah. He wasn't afraid to throw those outcuts, you know, against the coverage, which was giving it to him. But a lot of quarterbacks don't like to take it. He did that. And I thought he had some games where they really opened up, and I really loved watching it. Purdue, Iowa, Minnesota. That's where they kind of seemed like they went into the games and go, we're going to throw the ball today. Yeah. And – I thought it, he really shined in, in those games because the fact that he was in rhythm and made a lot of good throws. I, I Those games really caught my attention. All right, so you're an NFL GM. You're drafting late in the first round. You already have your starter for the next you know, two or three years on your roster. Are you drafting a quarterback like J.J. McCarthy if, if he's still available? Well, you know what? I, let, I'm going to chicken out a little bit. Here we go. <laughs> I want to see the combine. I want to see the running. I want to see him throw. I want to see his pro day. Everybody goes, oh, it's the day in underwear. Hey, I don't care. I want to see it. You know, when you're out there and it's, you know, nobody else, I want to see you really throw and show me the talent. And don't back off and throw everything with touch because you're worried about completing it in a workout. But right now, I would say I have a two-year starter. No, I'm not taking him in the first round, but this is early. Uh, I would say second round somewhere is where J.J. McCarthy is going to go to a really stable place where he doesn't have to play right away, and he has time to grow under a starting quarterback in front of him. Yeah, I love that. I you? think that would be best for him, too, going forward. That would be the most ideal situation for him to kind of be in that room for a while, learn from a starter, and eventually, if he shows promise and the ability to grow at the position, he'll have that opportunity to maybe be that yeah. starter for that NFL franchise. So I think that's an awesome take. All right, that's all for us today for Sims Complete with my uh, host, Phil Thank Sims. You. I'm Matt Sims. That's that means a pay to... raise. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Talking to you. That hey, means a pay raise. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll work on that. All right. We'll work Titles, on that. Titles, they, they count. Okay. Yeah, but that was good. <laughs> Our first thing in doing this, yeah. and it's like, it's really fun, and I really enjoy doing what we, you know, getting ready, watching all these plays and these uh, the quarterback. So we're going to have a lot to go here in the future, but it's going to be fun. Yeah. Big Phil, he is a football nerd. He's ready to talk football at any day uh, of the week, any hour. You just call him and he will talk ball with you. That's all for our talk here on JJ McCarthy and tune in next time. We're going to keep breaking down the quarterbacks for this year's 2024 NFL draft.